thanks for joining. Um, today I have Christina with us from Shifari and Miss Amuses, and she's going to be talking to us about how to sell your retreats on marketplaces and kind of what she knows about travel in general right now as well. So thanks for joining, Christina. Um, Carrie, thank you. Just, yeah, just a quick bio if you aren't aware who Christina is. She's a travel innovator and co-founder of Myths and Muses, which is a boutique specialist in Greece. And she's also a co-founder of Shifari, the first ever marketplace for women's trips and retreats. She loves creating and marketing unique retreats that bring people together while using the magic of the destination to further the transformation. And that was so, so well said. Um, so I just gave you a quick bio, but if you want to just intro yourself as well and kind of share your background a little bit more as to what Shifari is, um, yeah, you can get into that now. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I'm American and I was fortunate to live in Greece for little over a decade, uh, met and married one and brought him back. So um, Greece is forever in my heart. So our company, um, Myths and Muses, is geared toward group and leisure trips to Greece. So retreats are a big part of what we do. And we bring, you know, uniquely Greek elements to the heart of each, each trip we create. And then Shafari is uh, the passion project, what really started between my partner and I um, when we wanted to create something unique in travel. So it's, we like to connect women with our um, luxury women's trips. So these are joined adventures um, that we create. And then we also decided in, in the last couple of years to turn it into place. So we now offer a range of women's trips, both that are our own and also kind of bringing together the women's market. So it could be retreats, um, just kind of explorational trips, adventures, that sort of thing. Thanks for the intro. So uh, I'm assuming everyone here obviously wants to kind of sell out their retreat to what end. Um, they want to make sure they get all the spots gone. So how can someone benefit from listing their retreats in a marketplace, especially if they like haven't before? And what best practices do you kind of have um, for people to choose the right one for them? Since there actually are quite a number of marketplaces out there specifically for retreats. There, there definitely are. And yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great tool um, to be able to list your retreat somewhere. I think the biggest thing I would start to say is, is be, be selective. So, you know, the old adage says not put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you also don't have enough eggs for all the baskets, right? You're creating content and you're trying to create this trip and to spend your time putting your retreats on every single marketplace would be a big waste of your time. So do, do your due do, do your due diligence, focus on platforms which really match your brand and your audience. So quality over quantity, in my opinion. Mm. Depending on how big or how small your retreat is, you only need whether it's six or you know up to 20 people in the whole world to take your trip. So if you work on your own audience and then you know use some from a marketplace, um, I think it's very feasible to, to fill out and maximize your trip and your profitability. Um, I would, I would in general be cautious of paid listings or advertising in general with sales myself, I like a commission based approach. So if we get the job done, we get paid. That's how Shafari works. We get a percent of commission and that's how I think most marketplaces work, but in general, understand the commission that they're taking. And most importantly, you know, don't be afraid to dig in and ask questions about who their audience is and if it's a good fit for you. Okay. Cool. So, I mean, it sounds like it's definitely worth it if someone has some spots left to list the retreats, but I like what you said, like, don't spend your time putting your retreats on every marketplace out there, like do the right. research, find the one that's best for you. Um, and you kind of already segued into this, like do your due diligence. So what kind of questions do you think like teachers, company studios should be asking the marketplace before they decide to put their retreat on it? Like, is there some KPIs like average monthly viewers, like they should figure out, the, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. 
I think one of the most important elements is to understand the handling of payments and the commissions and the pricing. Um, understand if there are transaction fees involved, understand so that when you, you can kind of have some foresight as you're planning your trip and you're about to price it, you should think about all your sales channels, including the marketing. So think about what percent commission will be taken out. Think about if an additional credit card fee needs to come out. <clears throat> that sort of thing. So I would say understanding the handling of payments, deposits, who collects the money, how that works is really important. And good marketplaces will have someone with customer service that you can talk to. I personally like to connect and have a call and say, hey, this is how we work. Um, I know some of the bigger platforms might be, you know, kind of chat and text only, but I like to just get on the phone and kind of figure out um, you know, what I can offer to, to the retreat leaders and then they in turn can ask me their questions. I think it's uh, also important to understand beyond, you know, the platform is how they market them. So how are they actively getting people to, to visit their site? Who, as I mentioned before, who is their audience, the demographics, um, you know, with both social media and a newsletter reach, I'm less concerned with numbers and visitors, but more on engaged audience. So like I said before, it's a small number that you have to fill, even if it's kind of like the micro-influencer approach. Um, I think it's more important to have the right kind of viewer than a large number in, in my personal opinion. And um, I would suggest, you know, be, be resourceful. We as websites and as marketplaces have data and insight to help. So um, the worst they can say is no, ask them what trips kinds of trips sell the best and see if they have any tips or insight on their audience that they can offer to help you sell, suggest keywords or what listings might be doing the best. You know, they might say, hey, I can't share that information, but by asking and seeing what, you know, what might work for you, you can gain some valuable insight that will help you sell your trip that much uh, more easily. Oh, that's a great answer. And I never even thought about the fact like engagement over numbers makes total sense to ask about first um, at the end of the day we all want to sell and we all want it you know i love i love when i post something great and i get a lot of likes but my favorite is when i get the messages like that trip looks amazing where do i sign up and that's ultimately you know what what our goal yeah. is because if we promote your trip and we sell it we you know we all win true um so what does what kind of things kind of make someone's retreat stand out over others. Um, is there any little tips you can give someone? Yeah, I on a marketplace. Yeah, sure, sure. I like to I like to advise people to be different and be specific. And also, I think in general, with delivering a travel experience or any kind of experience, um, managing expectations is really the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, yes, we want to make the sale. But if someone walks away and said, that wasn't really what I thought it was going to be, you know, it's better um, for your marketing thereafter and for positive word of mouth that somebody said, this was a perfect fit. It was a great thing for me versus just telling someone what they want to hear to fill the spot. It To you in the long run, it's better. So I would say while it you know, sounds somewhat obvious, people often don't focus on why they're different. If you look at, you know, forget your own retreat listing. If you just start browsing the listings of some of these um, retreat marketplaces, you'll kind of see a lot of the same thing, bulleted, you know, this is what it includes. Um, so I would really make sure that whether it's a yoga retreat, trauma, whatever you're focusing on, look at your inclusions, your approach. Are there cool activities incorporated? Is it luxurious? is a little bit more authentic, nitty gritty. So have a unique voice and use your description to really build out that experience. Um, one of my favorite marketing gurus is Marie Forleo. And she says, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So we as Shafari, we went loud and proud with female only luxury and it works. Um, we do have you know, some different price points, but that's what we try to, you know, it's okay to say, this is for this kind of person, it wouldn't be a great fit for this kind of person. Um, and I feel like that kind of specificity will get people to, to book it. Cause I, I think sometimes if a trip doesn't tell me, if I don't get the vibe, I have a trip, if I can't really connect to it, why yeah. is this 
yoga retreat in this place different from all the others? It's not the technique, it's not the kind of yoga, but I want to know what the teachers like, what the people will be like, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's so true. Do you think, I'm just curious now, because um, a lot of people say it's so instantaneous. Sorry, there's a bus going back. <laughs> um, instantaneous, where people are like scrolling through. Do you think photos have a big play in it? If people are oh, absolutely. Yeah. visuals and photos. And I know for first time retreat, we get this uh, a lot too, if we're trying a new destination or something that we haven't done before, you know, there are, um, there are places where you can get photography, um, but also to ask your, you know, you want to, you want to represent images that are as authentic as possible. So if you don't have your retreat in Greece yet, you don't have images of a past trip you've run, ask the travel partner like us or ask your retreat center for some good images to use find some general images of the destination something that kind of builds the vibe use photographs from other retreats you've run um, that are you know kind of more detailed on what the people would be doing so it is photography i think tells a huge story so that combined with offering, um, you know, what, what will be unique about it, I think that will help sell it. And always, always speak from a standpoint of what, what you're solving for them, right? So it should be very customer centric language, not the retreat will include this. Um, it's all about yeah. this. Say, if you're struggling with this, this trip is perfect for you. Hmm. That's such a good, good point. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I'm not selling any retreats, but if I did, I know what I would do. Um, so it's, you think it's still beneficial for people, even if they only have, you know, like you said, it, a lot of retreats can be small. So let's say I have six spots and I only have one left. Do you think it's still beneficial for someone to post it on a marketplace or should they kind of just do their own marketing as is? What are your thoughts on that? I'm curious. I mean, I think it is. Look, if it's a matter of not selling and making any of that profitability versus, you know, losing a little bit for, for a commission, I definitely think it's worthwhile. Um, something, if something they could extend is, Hey, do you have a friend or I could, you know, do a friend discount if you bring someone along. I mean, there's other ways to market if you're, if you're like really close, but I do think, you know, you put, pour your heart and soul into creating this retreats, take a lot of time and effort to put together and you want to meet your profitability goals. So I absolutely think it's worthwhile even for just that one spot to create a, po you know, a few postings or, um, you know, yeah. to do it because it's right now, it's a really unique climate um, in travel. So whether your, your retreat is next month or in 2023, I'm seeing all of it. Um, the standard rules of the way, you know, can book six or eight months out, start mm -hmm. your selling. It's, it's kind of out the window right now. People we're seeing right now more last minute bookings um, as well as many people planning like way far into the future because all their previous travel got moved a year. So um, it's really never too early or too late to sell, sell spots. Oh, that's, well, that's good to know. Um, and this is kind of off script. I'm just curious, do you, besides of course, Shafari, do you have any other like go-to marketplaces that you recommend people or you like and have seen that do a good job you can think of? Yeah, so for me, I have worked with, like, it also kind of depends on, I, I would avoid the general marketplaces and go specific into what you're doing or do specifically like um, a, a collaboration with somebody. So as we're women only, even if your retreat is wellness or this or that, yeah. that's a, a, a unique element of what you're doing. So if it's yoga, then, you know, maybe you do find those yoga marketplaces. If it's, um, we did an entrepreneurial retreat. So I actually worked with some women's business groups and some marketplaces um, that way, where I went, I leaned more into the women's entrepreneurship aspect. So I would say, um, you know, try to find the more specific, the better, find keywords. And also too, if you're um, SEO is, is the golden, you know, element here. If people, you know, type out how you would search for your retreat or call it and whichever are closest to that, um, I would, I would contact them and it's worthwhile to investigate listening with them. Makes sense. Awesome. Well, thanks for all the tips. Any other last minute advice that you want to give on this topic or travel in general? 
Um, <clears throat> sure. I would say, you know, um, coming off the year last two year that we've had and coming off of COVID, it's really important to be mindful of meeting people where they are right now and incorporating post kind of COVID considerations into your trip. So if we're looking at ways to better sell your trip in general, um, solo rooms, capping your occupancy at a maximum. Some people are finding they're offering a bit of a premium, less people, so people feel more comfortable. Um, your job is to build confidence right now and think about what people are, are the retreat goers are seeking in their lives. They want, you know, relaxation. They want transformation. They want all the good things that you're about to offer. Um, so it's really, it's also really great just along the way as you're building your retreat to ask the audience what they're looking for. What, what places are you, do you feel comfortable going? We're seeing a huge range of people are really comfortable going to this place right now for whatever reasons, be it COVID, geopolitical reasons, and some people are really uncomfortable. So, um, you know, get, get a pulse on your audience and your clients and see what they're comfortable doing. Um, I also think, you know, it's really important to be patient and flexible in these times. So, um, if as a retreat leader, the travel sphere is not where you're comfortable and you don't directly offer travel support, find a good partner who does, um, whether it's a DMC like us in Greece or, um, someone who will help you with your flights, because even if it's not, you might think, oh, the flight's on you. That's not related to me. If that person gets hung up in a destination because they didn't have the right paperwork or whatever it is on their connection, and they're unable to attend your retreat, that, that affects you. That affects their whole experience and what they'll talk about their experience. And you don't want any, you know, you want everybody to come and enjoy it and it be as smooth as possible. So, um, you know, go a little bit beyond just the retreat and um, know what's required for your destination, any connections along the way, and make sure your retreat goers and your travelers know what they're going to be needing as they come along. Um, I also think, as I mentioned, managing expectations is really important. Yeah. So know what will be open, how communal will you be able to be, um, are masks required? Um, and this isn't just something, you know, we're, we're filming this now in, uh, in May of, of 21. This isn't something that's just for now. Like we might see these kinds of changes for the next year plus, or they might be permanent changes. So, um, you know, the world of travel and the world of retreats are changing. Um, there's still a ton of great opportunity to serve and do something really great in it. And by understanding what people are comfortable with, you're going to have that much more of an advantage on selling it. Awesome. Um, yeah, there's lots of actually comments coming in on the Facebook Live of people agreeing with you on SEO, awesome. photos, drone videos of of destinations, things like that, which is a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, so what do you have, oh, do you have something to say? <laughs> and I was just gonna say the more like thinking about, yeah, drone footage, like oftentimes I just ask, you can even ask the destination marketing, um, you know, if you're going to a specific island or a specific place, say, hey, do you have any, you know, free, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching your destination. So um, a lot of tourism boards will give you access to some, some imagery as well. So you want to create a great selling point and a, and a beautiful trip so they can see what it'll be like, even if you haven't led something there before. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is all really good advice. Um, people are saying, yeah. They love it. There's, um, and you already answered some of the questions on how to find specific marketplaces for you specifically to do a Google search. Um, and yeah, well, tell us more about Shifari. Do you want to just give us last minute what's what's going on with you? Tell anyone about Myths and Muses if they're not aware if they're doing retreats to Greece. Um, yeah, absolutely. Self promote yourself. <laughs> sure. I'd love to, well, I mean, you know, my goal is to help. So the great thing about Myths and Muses is by working with us as a destination expert in Greece, um, you're basically getting a huge chunk of the headache done for you, all the logistics. And, you know, you don't know what you don't know about a destination, right? So I kind of think of myself as like a retreat mixologist. Someone says, hey, we've got people coming with, you know, this is a topic of the retreat. We're at this, you know, kind of act activity level. We like to do this. And I go, 
oh my gosh, okay, well, if it's spiritual, there's temples everywhere. If you're looking for more remote and disconnect, we can put you here. If you're into this vibe, we can put you there. So I do think that like Greece right now is the perfect destination for retreats of any shape, size, kind. Um, it's such a beautiful place from the history and the wellness aspects that are uniquely Greece. And what I like, what I like about Greece is what retreat we would do there. It isn't just something you would do in another country. You're not just sitting in a yurt for seven days and you know, you're out, you're doing things, you're experiencing the culture, which is really fantastic. Um, and I am seeing still, I'm still getting daily requests for fall retreats. Um, Greece is beautiful until, I mean, you can go well into October and have a lovely, still incorporating the water and the sun, um, you know, kind of retreat. And I can give better islands and better destinations, you know, depending on what people are looking for. And then for Shafari, um, we're just kind of rebooting with new new trips and new things for this year and next. We're always looking for um, unique women's trips and unique women's retreats to feature. It's a curated marketplace. Um, so we do have, because we saw how other marketplaces had hundreds of thousands of of, of things so it's kind of a referral invite only type of thing um, but we do consider all applications and we we make sure that they match um, you know what we're able to offer so we do have specific categories um, like she succeeds is for entrepreneurial and professional development she restores as wellness she indulges our trips that are a bit more into you know culture indulgence wine wine and culinary, that sort of thing. So um, we're not retreat specific, we're just women travel specific, which um, a lot of people love because we might get somebody coming in for a unique culture trip, but then they decide, you know, next trip they want a, a healing retreat of some kind. So it's a great place where women can kind of connect in that regard. Great. Um, well, if anyone's watching and does women only travel, you can reach out to Christina and inquire about her marketplace, um, as well as if you're interested in hosting a retreat in Greece. Um, I did wanna, um, let me just put, yeah. because I would love to offer this to people. I know funds are tight and putting planning fees up are, are a big investment for people. So I did wanna offer on mistamuses.com on our retreat section. We do a full planning package. We even include legal paper and all the things and headaches that might be, you know, we help with contracts for your clients and considerations like that. So our usual package is $697, um, which is typically our planning fee. What we're actually doing is applying that to the entire cost of the trip. So you're basically getting our services incorporated. The deposit gets applied to the trip cost. So it's essentially like free planning on our part. Um, so if anybody is interested in that, um, you can reach out to me. Um, at either directly PM me or um, info at missamuses.com or info at shafari.com. I'll see both of those. And mention you saw me on this webinar and uh, I'd be happy to honor that for you. Great, I'll drop that in the chat um, once this is saved too. And one last question, I mean, since someone's asked twice, do you have like a few names of specific marketplaces for retreats? I know I kind of asked you this already, but any that come to mind besides you? There is the group, I think it's like bookingyogaretreats.com um, that they actually have several that are really specific. They have like horseback riding trips. They have um, different kinds of, let me just real quick do that. Cause I'll, yeah. I'll what I'm, mm -hmm. And they have like, so for different kinds of, I think it's power, yeah, by Tripaneer. So Tripaneer has various um, things. So they've got book martial arts, book culinary, book cycling. So instead of like, kind of like these general ones, I think, you know, detox retreats, safaris. Um, I, I haven't particularly worked with all of these, but I think that would kind of be in line with like searching, you know, what, what might work best for you. Um, and sure. then I think if you Google like best retreat marketplaces, some people have done, um, reviews and what do you know, we travel is at the top of the SEO. So you're in a uh, good company. <laughs> um, yeah. but you know, look at really focus on SEO and whatever you feel, um, you know, intuitively your clients would search for those 
will be probably what lead them to you. Right. If you're doing, I don't know, a someone's looking for a reef retreat in Mexico, they're searching that what's coming up first, mm -hmm. what marketplaces. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. And I would, you know, I think there's some really great Facebook groups too. In addition to yeah. this one, there are some that are, you know, um, so besides, besides marketplaces, just marketing 101, think about like other, you know, places where your person and what they're seeking might, might run in to, you know, to what they're looking for. So, um, I've, you know, even in like running ads, I actually have found that like when we run ads crossing with like Peloton and that kind of like those kind of brands, you yeah. know, it's kind of a status thing that has worked for us. So like think about other groups, other interests, you know, paint, paint the customer avatar where he or she might be hanging out. What do they do in their free time? What places are they interested in? You know, if you're running uh, wellness, are they also, you know, is vegan like something else that, you know, then maybe in vegan groups, you can say, hey, if you're really interested in detox, I'm running this, even if it's not a vegan retreat. So just kind of be a little creative with Facebook groups, outreach ads, and play around with some things and see what gets you traction and take it from there. Cool. Well, all really great advice, Christina. Thanks again um, for joining us. I'll drop your email in uh, the comment section here. This video will be recorded. It'll be live on our Facebook group and on YouTube shortly. So have awesome. a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks.